Julie. I'm delighted that you're able to come and join me today. Um, as you know if already now, my name is Wendy Laidlaw and I'm here to have a little informal chat with you um, just so that perhaps you can give us some little background information about the Heal Endometriosis Naturally Foundation programme. So thank you so much for joining me. I know you've been really busy and, and I just wonder maybe first of all you could maybe kind of give me some kind of you know, for any ladies that are watching this, um, what first attracted you to the Heal Endometriosis Naturally Foundation program? Well, it was something I've, in the back of my head, always had an interest in looking into because I've had so many di different health diagnoses prior to the hysterectomy. I was diagnosed with COPD, then it was switched to exercise-induced asthma, and then that was it disappeared. Then I got mitral heart valve prolapse. I had Meniere's disease. Um, just It was just 800 different diagnoses, and I knew that everything had to be one common cause. Then after the hysterectomy, I just was not getting better. But all the groups that you go into and all the doctors that you see tell you it's medication, medication, surgery, surgery. So you don't think that there's going to be anything holistic or natural that will work for you because you're told that it's got to be Lupron and it's got to be narcotics and, um, you know, again, the surgeries to remove everything and nothing else is going to work, nothing else is going to help. So I didn't look into it because I was listening to what I was reading online, what I was researching, and there wasn't a lot that I was finding for natural anything. And when I did find it, it was people bashing anything natural out there. Like, this is a scam, it's a hoax. There's no way that uh, any of this can improve your quality of life, let alone cure it, heal it, anything else. So I just didn't look into it. Then I got to a point where I was just desperate to do anything. I'd done the narcotics. I'd done um, pelvic floor therapy, which did, that was probably the only thing I did that actually had any effect. Um, the narcotics were not working. I was still landing in the hospital. And it was about the same time I had landed with a 12 day flare. I uh, went into the hospital with um, chronic appendicitis because I have the endo on my appendix. Uh, but they just dismiss me because they hear the word endometriosis and they're like, oh, okay, well, no more testing. We're not going to do anything. Get out of here. And I didn't have a ride home. And I was on major amounts of narcotics that they had put me on. And it was standing room only in the waiting room. So I passed out literally in a coffee stand yes. while waiting for my ride to come. And that's when I realized I, I really have to do something. And at that same time, I had seen uh, your posts about the upcoming program and decided what is it going to hurt to look into, into it. I can't be on narcotics all the time. I can't be passing out, you know, in coffee stands and not knowing, you know, where I am and not have anybody there with me. It, and it's not the first time that's happened to where I went to the hospital, told them I didn't have anybody with me. What are you going to do? And they just drug you up before they even tell you anything. And that's the solution to everything. And then my choices for surgery were to travel such long distances to Georgia, to California, back and forth. It also becomes a financial thing. And then what if it doesn't work after that? You know, the possibilities of it returning are astronomical. Um, so thank God I found the program at that time because it has been the only thing that has worked, not even in a small sense, but to a major magnitude to where, you know, at first I had a couple good days and then I had a good week and now it's been, you know, a couple, you know, it's been probably six weeks. So it's pushing two months of actually being able to function to the point I have started another part-time job and I have been able to do things with the kids and, I'm not having to pack around my heating pad and my TENS unit and 800 other things with me just to be able to get through hours, let alone a day of time. Oh, well, that's fantastic. And it's so great to hear your journey because I know that you, when you first completed the application form, there was just a big, long list of symptoms and issues and things. And I think we even said, you know, we discussed how because of your hysterectomy and because of your, your history, that it would probably take quite a long time before you saw some some um, some improvement in your symptoms. And you seem to have responded really well to the program. Yeah, I've been how fast it, I did expect it to take a long time. And I was kind of disheartened a little bit, but I was encouraged because I was seeing small changes. I haven't landed in the emergency room at all. 
uh, since I've started. I did start seeing a holistic doctor at the same time. And it was also encouraging that she was recommending a lot of the same things that you were recommending. So it's not like you've just pulled these things out of the air and, you know, you can tell you've definitely done your research on what is going to work to help break down the adhesions, to reduce flares, um, to help with diet, and to be able to get us to function and to live normally. And the thing I think I liked the most was in one of our earlier conversations when you had said, you know, it's not about, you know, the cure-all to endometriosis. This is about healing our bodies and knowing our bodies. And I have learned more things about how endo works, how my own body works, how cell growth works, um, how different supplements and things that you put into your body or even natural foods can help reduce the inflammation or the cell growth to help our bodies heal. Um, so it's been a nice co-op to have a doctor that also backs everything that you have said and adds more into it, um, you know, using the Mora machine, which I've, I've read up a lot on where people have criticized that about it being hokey and gimmicky, but it has also had great effects on the scarring areas where she's worked directly on it. So it's, it's been major to have a doctor that follows along it. And even my um, gynecologist has been on board with all of these changes, which was kind of shocking to me because I was worried I was going to get like a lecture or get scolded for, you know, not going along the path of, you know, the narcotics and the painkillers and everything. And, you know, he's noticed a huge difference as well in my healing, my functionality, um, and the amount of pain that he's having to treat and not having to push surgery forward as quickly as we thought it was going to have to be to where now I still get the little cramps and pains um, every month, but it's it's minimal. It's not a seven to nine pain I'm dealing with all the time. It's a three or four. It's I know it's there. I know something's going on, but it's not a big deal. And I can move forward with things. So it's mm-hmm. it's not something that's completely wiping me out to not be able to have a life anymore. Yeah. So it's it's been a blessing to be able to see it work. And I'm excited to know that this is early phase. Um, mm-hmm. And there's still a lot more to come. I still have a ton to learn. And, you know, each week in the webinars, there's so much to take in and learn and absorb that, I sometimes get in a panic that I'm going to forget it. And so it's, you know, writing everything down and taking an insane amount of notes. But I know that it's a process and I know that I can go back and look at these things if I feel I've forgotten information or want to touch base on it. I've still got that to go back on. Um, So even if I feel like I've missed steps, I can still gain those steps back. And plus also having you there. It's not like we're running blind and just reading a book and, here, you know, buy my book and you'll be healed and cured and whatever. It's it's a whole body, whole person thing. And you invest so much time and energy into knowing each person. And that's one thing I've enjoyed about talking to the other sisters where some of us have IC, like I've got Crohn's and Heather's got the gastroparesis. So both of us are very different and Jessica is very different. And you look at all the different plans that have been implemented, and they are very individualized. Um, You know, and you've helped us all to learn about how to deal with our other diagnoses or the other ways endo affects us, in my opinion. It's all endo-related. I don't believe in the 800 diagnosis thing, but it's helped tremendously. You know, if we need extra meat in our diet we learn how to go eat organic and how to look for proper meats proper foods proper vegetables proper things that are not going to disturb our system and when we went off on our own and found things we think are going to be beneficial it's nice to have your backing to say okay well let's think about this a little bit you know let's you know research into it a little bit deeper so it's been nice to not have to figure it out solely on our own or go along guessing um And it's worked. It's been working for every one of us. So, you know, the scrutiny that you get when you put it out there is kind of interesting, too, because you have sisters that get excited about it and want to learn about it. And then you have those ones that kind of go on the attack. You know, how dare you say that food or supplements or mental health or anything like that is going to be beneficial. But 
it has on our whole bodies, our mind, our spirits, our, the endo itself, you know, it, we can't say that it has not affected it because it drastically has amongst this whole group of women as a whole. We have all been affected positively. We're all doing more. We're all functioning better. Um, with our stomachs, with our pain, with our relationships even, um, which was one thing that surprised me is uh, you've taken the time so much to help us with our emotional growth and our relationships and how to help our family members deal and how to help us deal and help them. Um, that is, I think that's almost been more tremendous than the physical healing. Um, I've always let people walk all over me and I've not realized, uh, I guess, as much. I've always known that to a point. But when I was dealing with tough times and really getting down on some personal things that were happening in the endo community, um, you helped me to assert myself, to stand up for myself. And it's not a bad thing. You know, I've always thought that's a bad thing to assert and stand up for yourself. And it's also helped me in the medical realm because I've become my own advocate to the doctors and asserted myself to the doctors that I'm not going to do Lupron. I don't want to try doing that. I don't want to take any more drastic measures to remove any more organs that I don't have to. Um, and it's worked. It's worked. It's, you know, been really encouraging to know we don't have to take those drastic steps. And I think it's really important now, especially seeing my daughter going through the same things and the infertility and the surgeries and the medications and everything being pushed on her that we have other options. So it's mm -hmm. became critical to me to help other sisters know that there's a program out there that can help you in multiple realms of your life, not just in the physical pain aspect, but your whole way of living that, you know, there's no words to really put into place how big a magnitude this can have on your life as a whole and as your body as a whole. And you really have to try it and able to understand what we're saying and to, to be able to understand the ramifications that it can have. Cause again, there's just no word to put it in other than, you know, amazing and a blessing. Oh, well, thank you. That's very sweet of you to say. And, and of course, you know, the, the, you know, me working with you and, and working with everyone else in the program, um, I, I could put all this work in, but you guys have got to put in the equal amount of work as well. You know, it, it, it is a teamwork, isn't it? And I think with endometriosis, and sorry about the feedback there, um, I'm hearing myself speak. Um, but the thing about endometriosis is it's such a lonely, isolating illness over and above all the debilitating pain and everything else that, that goes on. But it's the isolation. Um, and, and, and as you know, how many women take you know decades to be diagnosed just to get a name for their symptoms, and then they're left hanging. Um, and to be able to get support in the healing journey, knowing that it's not a quick fix, knowing it takes some time, but you're putting in such good, great foundations, and you've got the support, it, that just helps you not being alone. So what, what would you say to women who are, you know, who are maybe feeling alone, have tried everything, what would you say to them about this program? I think that through this program, um, because right at the beginning, I, again, I went through a, a very high stress point, and it was equal to right before my hysterectomy. And I really did not think I could hit that low point again. I don't think I could have ever gotten to that emotional point to where I felt that isolated. But when you have family and friends that, that try to understand, but they don't fully understand everything you're going through, and you look fine, but you're dying inside, you're at a level nine pain, or you're fighting through the emotional loss of never being able to have kids, of dealing with a life of pain and surgeries and medications and narcotics and inability to function, it takes a toll on you when you're not able to communicate properly, when you're not able to get through properly. And it, you gave everybody the tools to be able to communicate, tips to help the relationship, and not just the relationship, but tips to help you mentally be able to handle those roadblocks. And we do rely highly on the endo communities. Um, so it was really hard when the turmoil had hit amongst the communities, which happens all the time. It's, you know, one of the reasons I started my groups was because when I first came on, 
trying to learn about endometriosis because I always thought I knew <laughs> endometriosis for the last 20 years that I had it, but I trusted my doctors and I shouldn't have. I always thought that having kids would cure it, a hysterectomy would cure it. And it wasn't until I ended up back in a wheelchair after the hysterectomy that I got onto the groups. But when you ask a question, you're attacked. Um, you're told that's not true, that's not right. Or why are you asking a question like this? Don't you know anything? Um, and it was really mean. And so starting my groups, you know, we believed on saying everything that you're going through. You know, if you're diagnosed with a heart condition, chronic fatigue, PCOS, IC, say it, share it. You know, we need to be looking at the whole body. Um, and these become your closest circles, your closest support systems. So for me, when that support system came crumbling down over very petty, minimal things or misunderstandings, because it is a black and white world, you're communicating through text, you're communicating through writing, you don't necessarily personally know these people inside and out. And I think we forget that, you know, we see a very flat piece of the person and we don't see the person as a whole. We don't know them deep down. And it was a learning lesson for me to try to understand what these other people were going through, but to not take it personally. And I always have internalized everything. And I took it very hard that I'm a horrible person. I'm a horrible leader. I shouldn't be leading groups. I shouldn't be talking in communities um, because I took it as a fault of mine. And you helped me work through it to understand you know, that it is a black and white thing. It's not something to internalize and take personal. We all go through hard things, and especially March is an insanely emotional month for all of us. I think March Madness uh, really does put it into a place. We're very passionate about endo and our journeys, and sometimes we kind of lose understanding that these people we're dealing with are humans on the other side as well. But I can't take it personally. This isn't somebody that knows my ins and outs and is standing next to me. And I'm doing the best that I can. And that's all I can keep doing. And there's still thousands of women, you know, that are looking to all of us for guidance. Um, and I think every one of us that has been in the program has became a role model. And we've gained even more purpose. Because I know one of my flaws in the beginning was... I couldn't talk about me needing anything. It was, yeah. I'm going to take this to everybody and this will help everybody and this will help this group and this will help this person. And I did have a hard time focusing on myself, an insanely hard time not just giving to the world and wanting to cure the world and heal the world and help the world. And you can't help anybody without helping yourself. And that oxygen mask thing is still stuck in my head, you know. You have to take that oxygen mask for yourself before you can help anybody else. You know, you're no good if you're dead to the world. And that's been huge in me going forward. So now when I deal with conflicts or I deal with adversity or, you know, uh, group conflicts or personal conflicts, whether it's in the endo community or in my personal life, I'm able to step back at it and not bawl my eyes out and not attack myself over it and knock myself down emotionally because the emotional pain of endo and the isolation of endo can be as bad if not worse than the pain of endo yeah. uh, it can be really difficult when you lose people close to you family members even um i've lost one of my best friends in the process um just due to personal issues and not being able to heal and people around them not understanding so they've pulled away but i've dealt with it better than I ever imagined I would be able to in my entire life. Um, and that's been huge to me. That's been very powerful and healing to me. And it's helped me take back control of my life in all realms. And, you know, again, asserting myself with the physicians, um, being able to do my own research and be insistent that this stuff is working for me. And now my doctor, my gynecologist, the main doctor, He's starting to research things as well, and he's starting to follow everything that I'm doing and everything that I'm looking into because he does feel bad that after the surgery, you know, he admitted he always thought he knew endo, and he did not. 
And so he's listening to me and the other women that are coming in from the local support groups that we've started and that a lot of these supplements work, a lot of this holistic, natural approach things work. Um, and, and I'm do learning. Th- and do you think it's because... Well, about how it's and, and do you think because do you think they're slowly starting to get that you can't just you're not just a robot and one size doesn't fit all and that's that's the thing I try to encourage in the program that whilst I'm educating you and informing you I'm trying to inspire you and support you and also you take back the power that you have within you which you didn't know you had and then you might have even realized you had the power but you didn't know how to exercise that in a in an assertive way, in a strong assertive way, without being aggressive or attacking or or feeling a victim. But what do you think in particular, you know, what aspects of the program in particular have helped you feel empowered? All of it. I think every single aspect that we, as we've went along has helped. In the beginning, it was definitely um, having you and the other sisters in the program as backup. Um, for the emotional end of it because I was crumbling so bad and I really wasn't sure if I was even strong enough to get through the program because I felt so inadequate um, in my knowledge of endo and in how I've done things and you, you do get slandered when you say you've had it for 20 years and okay well why didn't you do something why didn't you know something you know we have these groups on here that know everything and have the best doctors and best surgeons and you need to go to these top specialists or you know nothing or your views are wrong and to have every view that or opinion that you've had criticized is really damaging um so to go through this program and at the beginning to have that emotional boost was huge i don't think i could have done it on my own i don't think i could have done it without your guidance and your support as well as the support of the sisters going through it. And to see the changes in my body, to see the changes in my mental health, um, I think I was most shocked at my emotional health on top of the pain levels diminishing that I was not crying when things happened to me. And it was almost surreal to me, and it sounds kind of crazy, but... I've always been so emotional in my life, even as a child. You know, I've always had health issues. My daughter's always had health issues. And we see a Kleenex commercial and we ball our eyes out over it. We're just, we're very emotional as it is. So when something personal happens to us, we just crumble and blow up internally. We just cannot deal with it. And I didn't even realize it at first, but when I had asserted myself in situations that I needed to, and when I had came under personal attacks, I didn't even realize at first until talking to you that I didn't crumble and I didn't internalize it and I didn't attack myself and put myself down over it. I remained strong and, um, what is the word? I had confidence in myself that I was doing the right things and I was saying the right things about my journey because it was true. It's yeah. fact. It's not what some doctor put in a book that I have to say or, um, you know, what facts say. It's what's happening in my body, what's working for my body, and nobody can tell me that that's truth or myth. It is working for me. You know, I my pain is nearly diminished. You know, I'm riding bikes again. We're hiking to the creek. We're taking dogs for walks. I'm working again more than just part-time minimal hours. I'm canceling doctor's appointments. I'm um, canceling procedures, which has been baffling to me. I canceled another really scary procedure uh, this last week where they were going to hook up tubes and electrodes in lots of places. I really did not want to have tubes and electrodes hooked up to and I had went through a bladder procedure I did have two small patches um, or adhesions of endo inside my bladder very minimal and it was giving me some trouble but um, as I went further in the program with adding serapeptase and robenzyme and um, some of the other things into it and I think it's a huge um, involvement of the foods and the healing process and the supplements it's it's a whole 
um, incorporation of what is working, but I'm not having the pain in my bladder. I hope I didn't pause it there. No. Nope. I'm not having nope. the, my battery was alerting me. I'm not having the pain in my bladder as I was. Um, I was having accidents to where I couldn't go to the grocery store and I was peeing my pants, um, to put it nicely. I was having accidents in my sleep. I was leaking throughout the day in addition to my high pain episodes. And it was very embarrassing and very humbling to me. But um, this has all worked way better than the medication they were putting on. They were wanting to put me on prostate medication. I don't have a prostate. Um, you know, and, and other things which I really did not want to do. You know, things that turn your urine blue and turn your urine orange. And just thinking about this, I did try one medication. And after the first day of looking in the toilet and seeing that your urine is blue, what is that doing to your body? What is that doing to my bladder? And again, I don't have a prostate. So what is, how is this affecting my organs? You know, is this something I want to be putting in there? So I quit doing all of that and continued going forward, adding a little bit more um, into the uh, regimen. My holistic doctor had got me on some other UNDA numbers, uh, which are just supplemental drops that you add into tea or things like that. And between all of this um, that we've been working on, I'm not going in anymore to have tubes put in me. I'm not looking at having my bladder worked on now. I'm you know, very confident that it's going to stay that way. You know, I don't have doubts in the back of my head. I should have tried that other medication or I should have continued on this or I should have had another procedure done. Um, well, I, I, think, I think they say the definition of insanity, and it's my favorite saying, as you know, throughout the program is the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. And I think that was what led me to hit a brick wall and say there has to be another way and that's why I'm so passionate about what I do because I, I have seen such growth in you and the other women in just like in all areas of your life. And of course, as I always state as well, it's not a quick fix, but there's just so many different layers and different angles that are being healed. And I like the word heal because healing is a soft, gentle process and a learning and an education of what makes fire and what causes pain and it's pain and all that kind of stuff can come from lots of different angles. But what I'm hearing from you is that you seem to really kind of feel empowered with the information, the knowledge, the acceptance of your voice. You found your voice. You found out what you think, what you feel. And I know as part of the program, we get you to write um, a morning pages to write your journal. How, how did you find that? Um, I think it comes down to, um, you know, peeling the layers of the onion, as you say all the time. And... For me, I think the emotional part of it is huge in peeling those layers back because you can go back and look at it. Um, so, you know, in the beginning we talked about my 800 diagnoses and, you know, I was down for 12 days and, you know, it, it was going to be a long process, was going to be a long process, but it has not been a long process for me, thank goodness. It's been pretty quick in seeing the results. So when I go back and look at that journaling in the beginning and how torn apart I was emotionally and how destroyed my body was, I don't really know any other words than that. It was destroyed, it was damaged, it was broken, it was unbearable. I did not want to be in my body. Um, I just wanted to be the, you know, bionic woman and just go become a robot, you know, buy a new body. And we do get treated as robots when we go in. It's just take this drug, have this procedure, go away. Take this drug, have this procedure. So I already felt like a robot, and I did not feel like my body was good anymore. I, I, in any realm, um, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, there was just nothing good left in it. And I had so much anger and hurt emotionally as much as I had hurt and pain and inflammation physically. So to look at the beginning of it with all of that encompassing and now to look at it where empowered is definitely the word, you know, I use now from being broken to being empowered. And I am able to deal with um, physical things so much better. And it's not just jumping to, hey, I need to go take a hydro. I need to take 
you know, massive amounts of pain meds or going to the doctor and get more drugs to solve my problem. I'm learning more. I'm asking more questions. I'm advocating for myself. I'm not accepting what they're telling me that they're going to do without explaining why they're going to do it. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that we get complacent in when we go in. We've been so used to doing whatever they tell us to. You know, go take this pill. This is what you need to do. We don't ask any questions. So now I know when I go in, why do you want to do this? Why do you think this is happening? Um, and then I throw my own things out there. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to see happening. I don't want surgery. What are my options? What do you think about this supplement? What do you think about this uh, treatment working for me? And I didn't realize how many more things were available out there. I mean, float therapy and the meditation and the self-reflection are just as important as to what we're putting into our bodies. And I always thought I knew what I was putting into my body until you start peeling those layers of the onion and reflecting in your journal. And I was also adding into my journal our logs that we were working on of what's going in, what's coming out, um, pain levels. So to look at those logs and the journal of pain levels and what I was eating and what supplements I was taking, um, what the doctors were saying, and to now look at the conversations with the doctors, to look at my pain levels, to look at my knowledge and understanding of what I'm putting into my body and not hating my body anymore. Um, I need my body to go forward in life. I can't be fighting it all the time. You know, it's almost like having two personalities. One is you and one is your body. Yeah. And you're fighting against it the entire time. It's fighting against you. And that's never going to work. Yeah. It's never going to work. You have to come to an agreement. And it wasn't until getting towards the base of that onion and getting to the core of things um, that you realize how crucial that is to take care of your body so it'll give back to you. Um, you know, and having that positive relationship has been absolutely huge. Well, that's and I think it's crucial to have that journaling point in there so you can reflect on things. Yeah. Oh, well, that's so lovely to hear you say that because you're right. I think uh, every woman with endometriosis has had a point, probably the vast majority of the life, where they hate their body. And it's just this thing from their neck down that they just, you know, they want it to do what it's supposed to do and it doesn't. But that's so lovely to hear that you now have a relationship with your body that you didn't have before and, and that it's always trying to communicate to you and always trying to sort of share things to you. So obviously there, there are going to be women watching this video and thinking, oh yeah, well it worked for you. Uh, it might not work for me. What, what would you say to them? Well, I honestly that I was going to be the one it didn't work for because I had so many things compared to the other women coming in. And I was facing emergency surgery in California, and I'm thinking in my head, how am I possibly going to see effect? And I'm watching these women have effects in the early couple weeks where it was like, okay, yeah, it is going to be the long haul for me. And knowing how many miscarriages I had had and how many surgeries I already had. And, you know, in my head, there was no way to recuperate from that. You know, I was too far damaged for any of this to work. And in my head, in the beginning, I thought it was minimal stuff. Like, you have to do this program in the beginning, and I'm pushing 40, and I can't have children anymore, and I have scar tissue all over the place. And there were too many factors for it to work for me. So I did go into it skeptical, but again, I was desperate for something. Something had to work. There had to be something out there. And for it to work as quickly as it did um, was astronomical. I mean, I, I don't have enough words to explain how shocking and surprising it was for me. And even looking back now, in the beginning, I didn't realize how much was happening in those first few weeks when I thought nothing was happening mm. and other things were happening for the other women. It was happening because now I don't have the problems. Yeah. It, my pain was might have been at a higher level at that time, but it was still not like it was. You know, I was a nine in the beginning. It was a seven the first week or two. Um, so things were changing in there. There were... Um, things happening that reading back on the journal, I may not have seen 
going through it that day to day because you're in that moment. But looking back as time went on, there's many more things I did not journal that were going on at that time, which is leading me up to where I am now. And it's not six to nine months down the road like we planned on. Um, and it's huge. And there's nothing to lose. There is zero to lose by doing it. Um, but there is no amount of money that you can put on this program. And I know we had the luxury of being able to go through this, you know, as kind of the astronauts of the program, you know, the first ones to walk on the moon <laughs> and to be able to go through this wonderful thing. And again, you know, you can't lose anything by it, by the amount of support you get, the amount of changes that happen in your body. But again, you know, there's, how much money do we put out in doctor's bills and prescriptions and the amount of things that are not covered because endometriosis is not a disease in most places. It's mm -hmm. not recognized. So our medical bills are not getting covered. Um, the treatments that we seek are not being covered. So even if there was a high price tag on this program, I would pay it. Mm -hmm. It is that worth it to see the changes that you can make in your body and to see it happen. It's not a hokey program. And I think the biggest thing I would tell people, you hear so much in these, a lot of the endo groups that you have to listen to the science and you have to listen to these certain doctors and physicians and things that are out there. But ultimately you have to listen to your body. Yeah. You have to listen to yourself, to your gut, uh, to the things that are working for you. You have to search things for yourself. You have to do the research. You have to be your own advocate. You do have to be your own doctor. So it's it's not going to hurt to put these natural things into your body and to remove these chemicals from your life. And you don't realize until you're in the program how many chemicals are in your life, in the air, and in what you're putting on your body. And I think that was really shocking to me. Yeah on how many things I was putting on my body yeah. uh, that were probably not so good. Yeah. And I do think that that has had a big impact in how my skin has dealt with things. I have a sun allergy, uh, which I have been out in the sun several times in high heat, you know, high 70s and 80s, and I'm not breaking out in rashes. So I'm starting to think maybe it was those toxins <laughs> that I'm lathering my body in, um, you know, which goes internally and it affects so much in there so it doesn't hurt to learn about your body to learn more about endo to learn more about cell growth there is no harm in educating yourself yeah. and I think that's number one you know you have to put you first not all the voices that are coming at you and all the things you're hearing and reading yeah. you have to do it for yourself and do what's right for you yeah Absolutely, and I think that's what I think by the time women do get to the point, you know, that you got to, and I know I got to, you, you don't realise that you have the power that you do and how essential it is whilst I'm giving you all this information, education, inspiration, support. At the end of the day, it is down to you, the individuals, to, to grab hold of that, that grasp the nettle, as they say in Scotland, to grasp that nettle and run with it and you're not alone anymore because you know I will support each and every one of you till you are well you know I, it's my life's mission now to get as many people over to this side of the bridge as possible because if I can do it anyone can do it so obviously the, the program it, it can be a little bit two steps forward one step back it can be a bit of, a, bit of an emotional roller coaster Things seem to be going great, and then suddenly you might stop. What 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 tips would you give the women who who um, want to go on the program and and things are going great guns, and then they might have a like a life event come away and, and come across their path? What, what top tips would you give women to keep making sure that they stick with the program and stick to the end? Well, and I think that was one of the hard things for me too, because as you know, I had a lot of life events happen during this uh, process, whether in the endo world or my personal life. And at the same time, watching my daughter go through, <laughs> and I'm going to get emotional there, um, you know, go through her miscarriage and the things that she was going to be facing down the road. And, you know, it's hard to lose a child, but to lose a grandchild, I didn't think anything could be worse than losing my own, but 
to watch her go through that loss and to know that she has a road of hormones and medication and surgeries that are going to be thrown at her was absolutely terrifying to me. Um, and that threw me for a loop in the program as well because my focus went so much on her and becoming her advocate. And there it goes again. Sorry about that. Um, so I had to take a step back and remember what you said in the first place. I cannot help anybody before I help myself. And I had to give that focus time. I had to give that meditation and that reflection and time to heal my body and to learn about my body or I can never help her. I could never help her learn about what is going to help her or anybody else. You know, I had to get through this program for her, for my future program, uh, program, for my future grandchildren. I had to get through this program and for my daughter, I had to get through this program for my nieces, you know, my little six year old niece who may be facing this as we're four generations deep. You do have to put yourself first in order to have anything accomplished. And that was really difficult for me in the beginning, but you kept encouraging me and you kept reminding me that I was important, that it is critical for me to put myself first or essentially I was going to lose everything. You know, I was going to lose my endometriosis groups. I was going to lose my relationship. I was going to lose anything that I could ever do to benefit my daughter and what she was going to be dealing with going forward. And in doing so, I didn't even have to do anything in regards to helping my daughter. She saw everything that I was doing and she wanted to read it. She wanted to ingest it. She wanted to avoid it. Mm -hmm. So looking at those chemicals going in, she's now looking at those chemicals. She's now putting positivity into her own body and it is causing huge changes in her as well. Um, so, and same with the endo communities, they see what you are doing and you don't even have to say anything. You know, they see it in your words, they see it in your actions. Um, you know, they did see that I vacated for a time being and it shocked and scared a few people, but you know, ultimately they see the benefit as I'm coming back in and I'm stronger and I'm not crumbling and I'm able to go forward. Mm -hmm. So you can't give up and you need to look at the future and there's going to be roadblocks. We're going to have flare days. We're going to have pain. It's part of the process. You know, nothing is overnight, but would you rather live a life on narcotics where you're unable to function and living hooked up on IVs and being cut open? Yeah. Or do you want to try this? Yeah. You know, if it, what do you have to lose? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if you try it, you can avoid those horrible futures and those horrible outcomes of, you know, being the robot and going through the roller coaster and the circle of just surgery, narcotics, surgery, narcotics, surgery, narcotics, and having zero life. It's definitely given us our life back, which will in turn help us to give life back to our kids and our grandkids and our other sisters. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and I think, you know, and you were, as I say, you were the, the candidate that I said, look, you know, we really probably six months to, to, to a year before we might see improvements because of all your history. And, you know, a credit to you, you've applied yourself, you've stuck to the programme because I throw a lot at you, you know, with your, your, your daily sheets and your, your journaling and your meditations and, and really focusing on you. And, and I think that's what, what is lovely to see is when you give... You plant a seed and you give it all the right conditions. You give it water, nutrients, sun, and you give it lots of encouragement. It grows and it's beautiful and you get great foundations. You get great roots. And that's what I'm seeing, certainly with yourself. Really, it's lovely to see that your daughter is benefiting from this program as well. And that rippling effect that actually with just the information, education, inspiration, support, what can be achieved in such a short period of time, really. But, um, but look, thank you so much indeed for taking the time out to, to chat with me because I know this will be really inspirational to a lot of women out there who are just suffering uh, needlessly. And, um, and just you keep doing what you're doing. You keep looking after yourself. And um, thank you very much again. Yep, glad it worked. <laughs>